Hello Year 7. Today's podcast is designed to give you a little more information about the use, misuse, overuse and sustainable use of water in Australia. Learning about geography this term means that we'll be exploring more about the world that we live in. So let's begin. The use of water. There are many purposes that water serves. As a group, have a discussion about how and when you have used water today or for that matter, any other aspect of your life. Pause the video for your discussion and when play is pressed, we can compare ideas and see what you've come up with. Welcome back. I trust you shared some of your ideas with each other. I too have some ideas of where water is used. An interesting fact, the world's availability of fresh water from rivers, lakes and groundwater is shrinking due to use, misuse and overuse. It's been predicted that by 2025, approximately 33% of the world's population will lack access to adequate drinking water. So what are the areas of life that we are using all of this water? I've narrowed it down to six areas. Once I've listed the six key areas, you'll have some time to pause the video and copy them down. So the first one that we have is agricultural use. Think farming, crops and animals. There's industrial use, which are like the conversions to produce mobile phones, computers, clothes and construction materials. There's economic use to produce energy to sustain our economy. So examples of this include wetlands to produce fish and seafood, tourism and other recreational activities. Fourth, Water is required for mining, that's to extract diamonds like gold, silver, copper and rare earth elements. Let's not forget fossil fuels either, like oil, coal and natural gas. There's spiritual and cultural use of water. Did you know that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as well as other religions around the world use water for holy purposes? And lastly, there's domestic use. Yes, that's where you come in with your drinking water, showering, going to the toilet and other antics of everyday human life as we know today. So there are the six key areas in life where we use water. If the video is paused now, the table can be copied into your work page. Now we're ready to talk about the misuse of water. The misuse of water can basically be defined as the wrong or improper use of our valuable resource needed to survive. A key example of the misuse of water is pollution. Due to arsenic, mercury, radioactive materials, chemical wastes and sewage. According to the Queensland Government, prohibited water contaminants include chemicals, waste oils, paint, industrial wastes, clay, gravel and sediment, lawn clippings, leaves, pruning waste, vehicles and their components such as batteries or tyres. By keeping all of these things out of our water sources, we can try and sustain our resource and use water for better purposes. So if the misuse of water is basically to pollute or destroy the natural resource, what does it mean to overuse water? Pause the video and discuss what do you think it means to overuse water. There are lots of ways to overuse water. On a larger scale, let's talk about the concept of fossil groundwater as it's a great example of the overuse of water. Fossil groundwater is essentially drilling water bores into a deep layer of rock under the ground that holds water. This level of rock is called an aquifer and pumps water to the surface. It is technically possible to replace the water in the aquifer during the wet periods by pumping the water back underground. The problem is, the more water is taken out of the ground than what is renewed, causing Australia to overuse water. A similar situation occurs when over-irrigation occurs. But what forces us to make these sacrifices? What is the main threat to our resource? After all, water is big news in Australia. There are two interfacing forces creating this situation, supply and demand. Climate change and prolonged drought are lessening the supply of fresh water and the country's expanding cities are demanding more and more of this imperative resource. With these key factors in mind, what is being done to ensure the sustainability of our water? Key solutions on a national scale include the use of hydropower, geothermal power or tidal power, or introducing desalination plants. Basically, desalination plants take seawater and through a process called reverse osmosis, remove salt and other impurities which turn it to fresh water. So, as most Australians live near the coast, why aren't there more already? There's two main reasons. It costs a lot of money and a lot of electricity. Another solution is to capture stormwater. 
This is the name given to water that falls on the hard surfaces of the city, like roofs or roads, and is caught in pipes and gutters, then discharged into the sea. In Adelaide, there's been talk of people using this water and treating it in existing water treatment facilities. So what does sustainable water look like around the home? What are some of your ideas? Pause the video and discuss with your classmates. Some of your strategies may have included purchasing rain tracks, recycling wastewater, growing native plants to cover bare soil, using water efficient appliances and recycling grey water. In short, any way to save as much water as you can. In summary, we've spoken about the use, misuse, overuse and sustainable use of water. There are so many uses of water and it's clear that it's absolutely essential to our survival. Thank you.